Hey everyone, hope you guys are doing well. This is FPL Fran, and we're looking at a game week 34 free hit draft for you managers here who are going to be activating your free hit chips um, at this juncture of the season. Now, I think in terms of free hit 34, obviously we have three opportunities, I would say, to you know press that free hit. 34, 37, 38. 38 is very, very situational. It's also entirely league dependent. And I think with, with how tough it is technically to navigate between 34 and 35 and 37, you know, yes, there is quite a tough turnaround in terms of, you know, moving your Liverpool and Arsenal assets, potentially even these Crystal Palace and Wolves assets into your Spurs, your, your Newcastle uh, and your Chelsea assets on 35, or even let's say United assets as well. Even though I think the irony is that United actually have a really good fixture in gaming 34, but no one's really going to touch them on a free hit. And I think that's just the, you know, the sad part of the free hit where you have these double appearances and, and ultimately still really good fixtures for really good players here. So we have to sort of ignore, in my opinion, these United players and anyone who really has a single game week is also being ignored um, at this moment in time. With the free hit draft that we have here, I think one thing to illustrate first when we go towards touching on the defense is maybe just have, having a quick look at just what the fixtures are to, to begin with, right? And thinking about where we can sort of maximize really from the defense in my opinion the the crystal palace defense or really the crystal palace fixtures are the best out of the sort of teams outside of your you know top four contention liverpool and arsenal we know that we're going to triple up on both teams whereas obviously with crystal palace with wolves these are the teams where people will probably be putting their differentials within and even bournemouth as well but bournemouth in my opinion have the worst fixtures you know all together they have aston villa away they have wolves away Yes, Wolves is a nice game, but it's still away from home. Crystal Palace, on the other hand, have two great home fixtures, West Ham at home and Newcastle at home. Now, Newcastle is a very, very frightening attacking team. So I think even when you look at it from that perspective, home, of course, is great for defense. But this could also be just speaking to, you know, an opportunity really to just play your Crystal Palace attackers here because... Right now, we have some really cheap attackers who can fill out the free hit draft really well. And it really just depends on whether you're, you know, maximizing more towards, you know, more Arsenal attack or more Liverpool attack and how much risk you're going to take. But going back to, let's say, your, your clean sheets here, of course, ultimately, the clean sheets do favor your bigger, your more dominant teams. But once again, as I said, the question is about whether you prefer going for your Liverpool's the world, your Arsenal's the world on attack or defense. I think another thing to mention too is that a lot of people do currently own Arsenal defense, whereas Liverpool defense, for example, is still a differential when it comes to ownership at um, your, your top 100Ks, your top 500Ks, your top 10Ks as well. Whereas Arsenal, of course, is extremely highly owned and it would probably be something that if you wanted to take more risk as a free hitter um, to maybe ignore the Arsenal defense, maybe by just going for Gabriel, in a sense, he would kind of hedge versus the other Arsenal defenders. And he's, in theory, still the best Arsenal defender to go for just because he is such a good set-piece threat. But then you move away from that and move into your Arsenal midfield, and that could be very justifiable. But um, Arsenal do lead with the uh, clean sheet odds by far. Then it's Liverpool, and then it's Crystal Palace. Um, with Everton pretty close by. With Everton, of course, a lot of people are going to be questioning, you know, why why bother with Everton? Because they have a Liverpool fixture. But I, I still think, and especially, of course, after this terrible, terrible Chelsea performance, but ultimately, we, we talked about how Wolves have a pretty tough fixture. We talked about how you can triple up with, with Crystal Palace um, offense. And I think, you know, when you're, let's say, weighing up Bournemouth, um, Sheffield United, Everton, and maybe even Wolves, the goalkeeper that I'd probably go with is someone who's probably Pickford, right? He still has a good chance to make a lot of saves. He has two home fixtures, which probably means, you know, you're going to see less awful performances like the one versus Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. And as I said, better than your Saz in this situation. And I wouldn't really take Henderson um, on the free hit here. In terms of defense, I still think I would go with Gabriel and Saliba. And the reason is because I still think that we can get enough value from the attackers in other positions and get risk from those attackers. And I will mention, of course, if you don't really want to go with Gabriel and Saliba, I, I think it's very justifiable to simply go for uh, Daniel Munoz from Crystal Palace. Because with Crystal Palace here, you have, once again, as I said, really good clean sheet odds. I'd much rather go for a Crystal Palace fullback right now than an Everton fullback. So even though the clean sheet odds are close for Everton and Crystal Palace, I would go for the, for the Crystal Palace fullbacks right now because they just attack more as part of the system. So if you look at, for example, Mikolenko's underlying stats for the season, they've been very subpar. Whereas Munoz, for example, has really good underlying stats um, and obviously has been a key player under Glasner. 
On top of that too, Mitchell has actually had a huge uptick in terms of his underlying stats as well as part of the change in system. He's much more of a creative player now, which is sort of highlighted by his recent expected assists compared to, let's say, someone like Daniel Munoz, who's much more of a sh shooter of the ball um, and a shot spammer. So that's something nice if you're you know, ho hoping for that um, goal, for example, like the Gilchrist goal versus Everton. You've got someone like Munoz there who scored versus Spain in a very similar manner, right, on the back post, that sort of type of goal. Uh, so that's what Munoz brings to the table. And so, so does Mitchell. Mitchell, of course, I, I mean, it feels obvious to say that he's an assistive player, but the underlying stats do show that you know that's the case and that's not only purely because he assisted first Liverpool in that match there so I would probably go with Gabriel as a nailed player within the, this free hit as I said I would go with Saliba in this situation but I think that Saliba spot can be interchangeable um, with another Crystal Palace player within the midfield I'll talk about that in a moment and if you wanted to change that I would go with Munoz the third player that I would be going with is uh, Andy Robertson and what's interesting about Robertson is that I think recently we saw Simicas start versus Atalanta and another question I would have to say, and even asterisk right now, is that Liverpool and our understanding of Liverpool will, will completely change when Liverpool play in the Europa League. I don't know what their plans are versus Atalanta. They obviously have a 0-3 deficit away from home. Maybe they're going to embark upon one of the great remontadas um, under Klopp's tenor. But it could be possible that Liverpool field a B team. They could roll over and, for example, prioritize the Premier League because... Of course, they have an extremely tough fixture schedule. Why not give yourself more chances to rest? Or, of course, they go all guns blazing, try to salvage this tie versus Atalanta and try to win all trophies um, that they're climbing for this season, which is very plausible. In this case, of course, Virgil van Dijk, I think, is the safest play. So if you see, for example, Robertson plays 90 minutes versus Atalanta, I think I'd be very worried about his minutes um, within the double. Another thing I'd mention, too, is that the same goes for Trent Alexander-Arnold. Yes, of course, we might have a Bradley injury, and that could you know, be an asterisk in the sense that, let's say if it's a short-term injury, maybe Bradley plays one out of two of the fixtures. But not only that, we know that Simicas and Joe Gomez still exist within the club. So, of course, both Robertson and Trent are technically prone to being subbed off. I, do, I would just say that even from me watching Liverpool as of late, I think Robertson has played rather well on the offensive front, and Simicas has been really poor. So you've seen, for example, early substitutions within the Atalanta game. Um, and I think he, of course, possesses enough attacking upside in the sense that, first of all, he's a set-piece taker, and he just gets into incredible attacking positions. So you can see some of the chances that were actually built within the Crystal Palace game were pretty much created by Robertson. At the same time, though, Virgil van Dijk pretty much leapt up for a header and won, I think, four or five headers within that match and could have easily scored a header um, if he could aim for the goal, if I could make that crude joke. But Virgil van Dijk, as I said, the safer pick. Robertson, in my opinion, the much more aggressive pick and someone that I would be much more confident about if, let's say, uh, Liverpool rolled out the B team or the C team even versus Atalanta to prioritize on the Premier League bid. As far as the midfield here, I am going with the differential here of the double up of Eze and Olise. And, and and maybe you'll see that the reason why we've also excluded Daniel Munoz is probably forward related as well. But um, Eze and Olise, I think if you look at the recent minutes, it has been on, on an uptick. And I think another th point to mention is that even, for example, with a team like Arsenal, um, I think the player that a lot of people would want to sort of punt over here would be Havertz as opposed to Odegaard. Unfortunately, we got some news from Arteta that it seemed like he suffered a knock within the previous match when they were losing, well, not losing at the time versus Aston Villa because Odegaard did lock in his clean sheet technically. Um, but Odegaard did suffer a knock within that fixture. So it might be the case that who knows, he might not be ready uh, necessarily for, for the Premier League match. Whereas Havertz, of course, he plays either midfield or you know central forward positions for this Arsenal team. And he's had really, really good minutes so far um, and seems to be, for example, the punt that we we're all looking at, you know, when, when Arsenal started the season with the Community Shield with Havertz there. But in general, of course, a lot of people would have shown that the team has played generally better with Havertz so far than let's say with Jesus, but I think it is also, unfortunately, a, a, a part of small sample size, right? Jesus has been someone who's been coming back from injury, but I would argue that Arsenal has probably enjoyed their best attacking stints, particularly within the Premier League with Havertz up top. So I think Havertz, of course, is a very justifiable punt, and, and it, it goes back to that situation where if you want to go for Havertz and you don't trust in the minutes of someone like Olise right now, I would go Havertz and I would drop Saliba and I would go Munoz instead and probably replace Olise with Havertz. And I think that's something I would mention right now in terms of the Olise position, because between Eze and Olise, one thing I'll say is that 
The last time we saw a penalty taker, I think Elise took. Mateta could also be on penalties, but I, I still think Eze is the one who's on penalties. Eze did not take a penalty when he was sort of coming on as a sub, didn't even get a kick of the ball, and Elise took a penalty. But, you know, between all three of them, I would say probably the penalties would be shared between Eze and Mateta. That's my intuition, but I might be wrong. I'm also much more confident with Eze's minutes because recently, if you look at, for example, Eze's minutes, he was only early subbed versus Liverpool and Man City. I think part of the Man City and Liverpool substitutions come down to game state. Whereas if you look at the previous matches before that, even for example, with a turnaround of three to four days time, for example, with the end of April and, and sort of rather the end of March and the, and the beginning of April, those games for Crystal Palace, you could see that Eze was actually playing um, 90 minutes between two fixtures and this was coming back from injury. So I think Eze is definitely fully fit. I'd be much more confident about keeping him within my draft and making sure that he guarantees minutes and, and the penalty taking um, within the team. Luis Diaz is the punt that I would still like to go for because I think between him and Darwin I would still say that his minutes are, are more so impacted than Darwin's minutes or rather Darwin's minutes are more so impacted by you know Jota coming back and of course Gakpo always being an option I still think that what you saw of course within the Crystal Palace game is is very plausible so for example Luis Diaz can be subbed off at 65 minutes but I still think that it's much harder for example to see Jota and Gakpo um, actually taking minutes from that left wing spot away from Luis Diaz and I also still struggle to see Darwin for example taking left wing minutes away from Luis Diaz because if, if anything the form of let's say a Darwin and a Salah right now is, is significantly worse in my opinion at least compared to Luis Diaz um, who's ab absolutely played really well for Liverpool as of late until of course this week where they've hit a roadblock as a team collectively. Um, Saka as well I'd be very confident in having the draft this just comes down to him and Salah, I think, being locked in. Now, if you are someone who, of course, is trying to chase on many leagues, I can understand wanting to maybe drop one out of the two of them. But I, I, I think I have no interest, really, in, in, let's say, dropping Salah or Saka on a draft, particularly on a free hit. They, for me, are non-negotiables, and they're both penalty takers. There's just no real risk that needs to be taken here, particularly when they have more fixtures in the rest of the field. Uh, and then in the forward positions here, what you'll notice, of course, as well, is that we don't have Darwin. For me, I think that depending on the Atalanta game and, and who starts within the Atalanta game, there is ever so the opportunity that Darwin does not start one of the next two league fixtures. And I can't confirm that right now because I have to see the Atalanta lineup. And you might want to react to that, you know, to, as to whether you choose to go for Darwin or not. But even still, let's say if, if Darwin gets rested, for example, at, and, and maybe starts off the bench for Atalanta, it's still very plausible to me that he could still get benched one of these two games for Liverpool. And I think that's very concerning, of course, because it's not like the fixtures are incredible for Liverpool. So you really want to guarantee someone who has really good minutes. Um, instead here, I think Solanke and Mateta are the ones who give you those minutes as well as give you those fixtures. So what you'll notice about this draft right now is that there's no Wolves players within the draft. And part of that is because Wolves ultimately play versus Arsenal. The reason why we've been recommending Wolves players for people who are not free hitting though is because if you look at Wolves' fixtures outside of the free hit, they were really good. And even outside of the free hit, let's say after the next week, you know, they still have a Luton game in hand. So with Wolves, it's more about the, the, the sort of medium to long term around gaming 34. But if you're just looking at a free hit, I still really think the Wolves get, Wolves double gaming fixtures are poor. So Cunha doesn't feature here. Instead, I'm very high on Mateta, who has played really well for Crystal Palace, seemingly has kept Eduard completely out of the team. And for me, he's going to play 80, 85 minutes. I really think that that's good enough as well to compete versus uh, the Cunhas of the world, who, of course, is he kind of has staggered minutes right now too. And even versus Darwin, clearly is going to suffer as well with the rotation that Liverpool have to offer. And then with Solanke, I think, he is basically the, the player who's the safest, the easiest to keep within this free hit draft, even though a lot of managers do own him. And once again, he does feel like another pick here where you, if you don't trust, for example, Bournemouth, for whatever reason, you can move away from him. But he's a penalty taker. He's a 90-minute player, um, usually, of course, and ultimately is you know has all the tools that you want really for a four this week, with the exception to maybe slightly worse fixtures than the rest of the field. But when you look at the underlying stats um, of him compared to some of the other forwards, still very, very positive. And then on the bench, we have Virginia here just to sort of replace Pickford as your bench Everton player. You're not going to double up on Everton here within this free hit draft, at least in the starting 11. So it might, might as well just get the Everton goalkeeper here who would play anyways. Because we're tripled up in Crystal Palace, of course, no Crystal Palace players on the bench. Mikalenko, of course, as well sitting on the bench. You could go Tarkovsky as well. Doesn't really matter who you go for at this point in time. I think that you could maybe even go with Ait Nuri as well. Um, if Ait Nuri was ready to play, I think I would definitely put Ait Nuri within the bench ahead 
ahead of Mikolenko, but assuming that he's not fit because he wasn't in the squad selection for the previous game versus uh, for Wolves, um, I'm not going to keep him there. Dallow as well is going to sit on the bench here. Just an incredible game here with Sheffield United at home. One singular fixture is good enough to sort of situate him within the bench here, but he's just part of the bench. Uh, and then, of course, if you can afford Holland, you know, put him put him as your first bench option, I suppose, um, as an auto sub. Recently, we've seen it with um, a lot of, you know, unfortunateness, a lot of auto subs, some good, some bad. Uh, for me, mostly bad. For some people, very, very good in terms of getting braces and things like that. But Holland, I think, a good auto sub to have. If you, do, if, if, you, if you can't afford Holland for whatever reason, you can easily just have Cunha here um, in this spot. And that's pretty much it for the free hit draft. As I said, I think there's a lot of considerations to be made. You know, considerations to be made, particularly after Liverpool play Atalanta and you know wh whether or not we feel a little bit more confident about, about the Robertson punt. Um, I, I don't think Trent right now would play two fixtures. In my opinion, it, it feels a little bit far-fetched unless, of course, he's extremely fit, which I don't think is plausible. And then in the midfield position, as I said, Olise feels like a punt, but you can replace that punt with Havertz. And by doing so, of course, you just change Saliba with Munoz. And I think that would be the only major change that I would consider really making with this draft. I think that ultimately, of course, within Arsenal, we know that Odegaard can do well too. So if he's fit, I can understand replacing Havertz with an Odegaard as well. But it comes down to, once again, his fitness. And, and, and of course, any updates that we can get from this Arsenal team after the Bayern Munich game too. Uh, but that's it for my thoughts in terms of your free at 34 draft. Hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead and I'll see you guys soon.